Good morning viewers, it's the Colonel speaking to you live from the Grange of British Imperial YouTube Broadcasting. And today we've got the first of National Savings Movement records. This one's called Bruce Belfridge Calling. I believe they're wartime recordings, you know, raising money, that sort of thing. Here we go. The dinner, just a few remarks about things in general, and this is Bruce Belfridge making them. Now, I'm the last person in the world who could ever be asked to give my ideas on any subject connected with economics or finance. It's a subject which, to my bank manager's sorrow, I've never properly grasped. Still less can I appeal to other people for money. All my life, people have been appealing to me for money. In fact, I might say, never have so many appealed for so much from one man so often. But unfortunately, that's not an uncommon state amongst actors and my six years at the BBC haven't performed me very much, I'm afraid. So this is just a suggestion to people who share my bad habit of spending money as soon as they get it, or often before they get it. But first and foremost, if we have time to spend money, we are not doing a proper job of work in a total war. I expect a lot of you know the story of Lord Beaverbrook's visit to an aircraft factory when he insisted that 20 bombers should be turned out from that particular place by a certain particular date. The management said this was impossible, and his lordship insisted, and the staff got down to it, working at top speed, day and night, right up to the last moment. And the bombers were on the runway at the time appointed, took off and flew over Germany, but unfortunately, when the pilot pulled the lever to release his bombs, the night shift fell out. Well, that's the sort of pressure we've got to work at now. Nothing less is going to be any good. We've had our bad times, but they're not going to be made any brighter if we sit and moan about them. Let's fill up every spare moment with a wartime job. Home guard, special constable, digging for victory, whatever we in reserved occupations have elected to do in addition to our ordinary jobs, let's do them all out. And one more suggestion. Let's, let's get as many laughs out of our lives as we can. There's a pleasure to be got in any job if we only look for them. Now, you might not think that reading the news provided many opportunities for laughter. But we get quite a lot one way or another. We'll take the pronunciation of these place names, for instance. Now, I admit we're all very relieved that the Russians have retaken Malo Yaroslavets. I've hated it several times at seven o'clock in the morning. But a little while ago, I came across a place which was spelt C-E-R-N-A-U-T-I. I struck it in the early morning with no time to check up on it, so I took a chance and pronounced it Sir Naughty. For when Alan Howland came to relieve me, I told him I'd had a bit of a teaser, and I told him it was spelt C-E-R-N-A-U-T-I. Oh, that's easy, he replied. That's just chow. Well, here's one more story. As you probably know, the communiques from the various ministries are sacred. We meant all sort of work. Well, unfortunately, some of the authors have a very strange idea of the English language, and so we sometimes come up against a bit of a tongue twister. During the Libyan campaign, I was once faced with this one. An Italian battalion is reported to have scaled the precipitous escarpment. Well, this was a little too much, so I got the senior sub-editor to ring up the war office. He contacted the colonel in charge of the communique and said, or would you mind, sir, if we altered this line because the announcer finds it rather difficult to speak? To which the reply came, Oh, uh, do you read these things? We always took them up on a green baize board. We find it answers better. Well, then. So, work all out and keep your sense of humour. That's my idea of a way of life to meet the present situation. Well, if we do that, there'll be no time to spend money. So we shall have no difficulty in doing what we must do, save to lend to the country. If we do that, we shall still have the privilege of lending, and not have to face the alternative, which many people think we should face anyway, of having it taken away from us. I think he's finally finished now, viewers. <laughs> it doesn't help when these people have long pauses. Anyway, hope you hope you enjoyed that. Thank you, and goodbye.